Alright, well hello everybody and welcome back into the garden. We're currently going micless. It's a fairly low wind day and I'm really hoping we can get away with uh, getting this whole video out before the wind picks up. But of course I spoke and here it comes. Today's going to be a fun one because we've got some new garden features out. And uh, in particular one of those features is a little pond, preformed pond we got when the uh, last neighbor moved out. And I've been thinking for a couple of years how I'm going to make use of this thing. So I've decided what I'm finally going to do is it's time to come full circle and uh, we're going to build another no power aquaponic garden out of this. I've already got some of the fish out and uh, I'm going to be moving all of the rest of the fish out in the coming week so that uh, when I'm fixing the, the herb garden and the salad greens garden downstairs, they're, well, they're not really stressed out by the changes and all the water changes. And yeah, it just... I think it's going to be better if they're outside. Lots of mosquito larvae for them to eat while I don't have the aphids in season downstairs. So it's, yeah, it's a good thing. They're kind of at risk from the birds and I recognize that. But they were feeder fish that are over a year and a half old. So they've already had a really good life comparatively. Let's take a quick look at the pond and garden and then we'll, uh, well, get started discussing how I'm going to rebuild and revisit the, the no power aquaponic garden for uh, 2019. All right, let's get looking around. So I guess we'll start this week look around the garden at the, uh, the bunk looking at the bunker garden here, which has got some beautiful examples of peppers growing in here. We've got the two lemon habs here, the two Caribbean red habaneros over there. Still pretty much only seeing peppers forming on the lemon hab, but we have got, let's see on this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight we've got at least eight pepper pods on this one plant alone which easily makes it the most productive pepper in the garden so yeah i am thoroughly sold on this very simple bunker garden technique and when we do move on to acreage you know with that huge eventually there will be definitely be more of these built as we are opening up new land for gardens we'll just uh we'll take some of that sod we'll build a few of these for our back row and uh, I think we can safely count on some pretty reasonable production. There's no reason that uh, these can't be recreated by, by anybody. I mean, really, it was just as simple as cutting up the sod like Lego-sized pieces, building like Lego bricks, and then we stuffed it with compostables, and uh, we've been growing in it ever since. It has, uh, it has definitely worked out, but enough babbling about the bunker garden let's take a look at the corn because we've got some interesting stuff going on there and uh, I planted some peas as a bit of a nitrogen boost so hopefully we'll see that that works out anyway yeah let's take a look at the corn as we go through our little corn patch here you can see we've got a lot of different heights everything kind of sprouted at its own rate and uh, I don't know if that's because this is a hybrid corn or a new variety or what but we do have a couple here that are starting to show their male tassels at the top. Soon enough we'll be starting to see things coming up at these side branches, so that's really exciting. 200 corn stalks in this little tiny patch is definitely too much, and uh, I will have to space them out better in future years, but I'm going to get one of those little pushing seed planters, I think, and uh, that should really help with this. Let's see if we can find some of those peas. So taking a closer look down at the bottom here, you can kind of see there's one of the peas sprouted up. The, I planted these, <laughs> in theory, I did this on video that week where the video just didn't want to work out. Here are a couple more of them. So these ones here are edible pod peas, kind of your, your spring snow pea variety. And then all the way along, I also planted a bunch of uh, Lincoln and Homesteader variety peas, just to kind of see how it would do. Looks like we've got another one kind of popping up over here. So that's excellent. I'm not expecting much production out of these, but since peas, legumes in general, are supposed to be particularly good at grabbing airborne nitrogen and sinking it into the soil, it seemed like for the money, it was a good natural solution to try and boost the corn growth. Is it gonna work? I don't know. But isn't that kind of how most of my gardening goes? Is it gonna work? I just don't know. Looking beyond the thistles there towards the house. Got the pumpkin patch at the front of this doing quite well. And these are the racer variety of pumpkins. 
This patch was actually planted later than the other patch we'll look at in a few minutes here, but it definitely seems to be doing a lot better. Looking down here, we can see the first pumpkin flower nicely open on there. And I took a look, and it is a female flower. For those of you who don't know how to check, we'll just pop on in here. Seemingly. And if you look behind, you can actually see a bit of a melon ball. Hopefully, the camera's getting this. You can actually see a bit of the melon formed there. So that's how you know it's a female flower. I looked all over the plant today, couldn't find a male to pollinate that with yet. So I'm hoping that'll be taken care of by nature sometime soon. Either there'll be some for me to use or the bees will find them or whatever, but that is really exciting. It's supposed to be a nice sizable pumpkin. And hopefully it's early enough that we can still get that sucker growing. Let's move around the side here. Painted Lady Runner Beans growing sideways on their fence. Lovely flowers on these and quite plentiful. You can see them kind of forming all over the place here. Some nice ones there. And they're just going all the way along the fence here. So even though it's, you know, climbing sideways instead of up doesn't seem to be that much of a problem and they look like they really want to be nicely productive for me we got some here that are basically forming a natural rope look at the twist on that reminds me of what the Malabar spinach used to do back in that old greenhouse good times look at those so beautiful so we'll pan over here take a look oops Take a bit of a look at the pepper patch. You can see the habaneros along the back here are doing fantastic. Got a few dandelions in here, time to pick those for the chickens, but for the most part, hang on, there we go, that should be a little better. I kept bumping the legs of the tripod against the back part of our little bean fence there. Here we've got a nice example of one of the lemon habaneros. Lots of flower buds on here, not a lot of peppers yet though. Again, with the one beside it, we've got a, a very similar situation going on. But a few of them, let's see, I think it's maybe this one. There we go. A few of them do have some nice looking pods on there. But nothing really compares to that one Leban Habanero that's in the bunker garden. So, absolutely sold on that. There are probably a couple of dozen pods in amongst all of these plants, though. So that's good. It's not going to be a horrible season. I don't think it's going to be a record breaker, but it's not going to be too bad. I think I see a Caribbean red habanero pod. Let's get a closer look here, and oh, what do you know? There we go. So there's a couple of those around, not too many. What is this? The Trinidad Scorpion Butch T Red. We've gotten some good height development on this lots of flowers really it's only going to take one pepper to mess me up for life so don't need a whole lot out of that anything is good looks like our devil's tongue yellow here just not going to make it a little bit too much competition there doesn't really have time to grow this season anyway spinning around we've got our santa fe grande we just one little pepper Grow, little buddy, grow. And then, we've got the pond. So some of you may remember back when this channel started, oh, 2012, I had a no power aquaponic garden because I wanted to really test the theory and see what I could get away with. And that was basically made out of Folgers cans, hoses, and, uh, you know, some basic rocks. We had a kiddie pool that we got from the neighbors. In this case, we have a pond that we got from the neighbors. And really, I put some drought resistant plants into the Folgers cans, water them through in the morning and the afternoon, and it's as simple as that. I made a video kind of discussing that for, uh, I believe it was Hippie Chick back in the day. If you haven't seen this video, I look terrible in it, you should totally go check it out. Hair is just everywhere, terrible shirt, it's 
I didn't expect it to get the number of views that it did, but I get a lot of grief over the, uh, the no power concept. And I think a lot of people mistake no power for no effort. But uh, it's one or the other in this life. So, we are going to be revisiting the no power aquaponic garden using this setup here for 2019 to once again prove the theory does work. And, well, frankly, because I miss, I miss having an outdoor aquaponic garden, the results are just so much better with natural sunlight than I could ever get down in the dungeon. So, that will be a future video probably in the next couple of weeks. And yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. We've got a few of these set up at different heights, so we'll put different types of plants in there. Like I said, we'll discuss that in uh, greater detail in another video. The John Deere crate garden here before we leave for the day is definitely becoming something of a uh, pasta sauce garden. These basil plants aren't doing as well as I'd hoped, but they are doing a little bit better than they were in the windowsill. These very late stage tomatoes seem to be doing all right. And I think from this cluster in the front here, uh, get over this cluster in the front, there are quite a few of them that spread it up together. I pulled these out of the mouse melon. I'm gonna grab one of those, I think, for the no power aquaponics. Generally, you wouldn't wanna use something like a tomato, but again, I'll go over why I'm doing it in uh, the actual video where I revisit the idea. Anywho, we have our two-year-old sugar rush cream. No signs of being in a rush. It's pretty atypical. At least I know it is the sugar rush then. That's all right. That's kind of cute, isn't it? Not bad for a parked crate from a tractor supply dealership. Then up front here, we have one of the more productive peppers as well. This is also a lemon habanero. So it's, it's definitely my number one producer this year. Not a huge fan of yellow peppers unless they're fresh, but Luckily, they're going to be fairly fresh. Some nice looking pods. Hopefully that's showing up on the camera. This one worries me a little bit. It's uh, a little on the extra wrinkly side for a standard hab. But I see three, four, five, six pods on here. This is, this is in close competition with the one in the bunker garden, but uh, I, don't, I don't put it as a tie because these pods are nowhere near as advanced. And this pepper plant came out, what, two weeks? probably two weeks before the one in the bunker garden did so yeah while this looks great comparatively not necessarily a win just yet lots of new flowers forming on there though and we still have a couple months of season left so i'm very encouraged by this so i guess that's where we're going to wrap it up today thank you guys so much for joining me hanging out as i share what's growing on in the garden here some of my successes some of my failures and well some of my upcoming plans. So if you're interested in the uh, No Power Aquaponic Garden 2019 video, like I said, hopefully that should be out sometime this week, next week. It's uh, kind of a busy week ahead, so we're just gonna have to see kind of how it goes. But make sure you hit that little subscription button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Shox and I did a live stream the other day, and a lot of people uh, commented about how they were the sorry that they'd missed it. So I'm wondering, maybe those bells have been unclicked by YouTube. They like to do things like that to us. So just make sure you've uh, got that notification bell hit if you want to see the live streams because y'all know we's pretty random around here. So yeah. All right, everybody. Much love and until next time, take care of yourselves, take care of each other and for all, for the love of God, water your plants.